I just finished this landscape painting not long ago and I want to thank you guys for for showing up and being part of this uh, this thing that I'm doing here here we go here we go let me move this we put a fresh canvas So the trick to this is that um, the way I like to paint, the way that I like to see when I'm painting is very much, it's a little bit poetic. So without getting too much, maybe, or I don't know, maybe I'll get into it. Uh, it's a little bit poetic. I like to paint as if the people that are watching it are completing the painting the viewer is completing the painting so you get out of my paintings as much as you put in it's a uh, So I try not to put so much information, but I like to put, um, well, I'll take that back. I do put a lot of information, but it's different, right? It's not, it's not the information that, that you would normally find in a painting, meaning uh, representational information, right? The information that I'm putting is open for interpretation. The trees, the leaves, the landscapes that I paint, they're open for interpretation. You know it's a landscape, but you don't you don't really quite know what's going on in most of my paintings. You don't you're you don't you don't really know what's going on unless you start using uh, you start trying to find out what it is and you start using your, your imagination. It's it's like reading a book, right? Or listening to a song. You, you're 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 using your imagination to complete what that means, right? The information you listen in a song, uh, any song, pick any song. Uh, Hotel California, right? Some uh, desert highway or whatever. You have to picture the highway that that comes out of you. You have to picture that, and everyone's idea of Hotel California is different. Right? Everyone's idea. Uh, a movie shows you fragments, visual fragments of what's going on, but a book and a song doesn't. Right? A painting cannot show you the full picture because it's just one image. It's one image, right? It's not. It's not like a movie, right? It can't show you. Even if it was, even if it was an image, uh, like, like a photography. It can't. It still can't show you the full picture. That's why. That's why. Uh, who was Ansel Adams, the, the great photographer, said that that even photography needs to be constructed. Right. You have. You have to. It's composed. Right. Photography is composed. And a painting is always composed. Is always composed, and so when someone sees one of my paintings, they're not. I assure you, you're not seeing the full picture. You have to finish the full picture with your intuition, your imagination, your your life experiences. You have to finish the picture. This is what makes these paintings loose brush, expressionist. Uh, as far as the impressionistic brushes also, the impressionistic paintings, this is what makes them so, so beautiful, right? The, you as the viewer have to finish the information. The information is not all give it, given to you in a linear way. It doesn't say, well, here's a little tree, here's a lake, here's a, no. It, it, most of it 
it's left to interpretation. You know there's something there, but you're not quite sure what it is. And, and intuitively, you understand what it is, but visually, most of the time you don't. And, and this is like a same thing with Van Gogh's paintings or any of the Fabis paintings, post-impressionist or Fabis paintings, Cezanne, any, any of those guys. Uh, you know what the painting is, but you have to use your imagination. You have to use, you have to stop trying to be a critical thinker. And you have to start using your intuition to finish the painting, to see what the painting is about in order to quote unquote translate right translate the painting it's written in code but the, the code your your soul can only understand it only your soul can understand it right? it's like poetry people cry when they hear a song a beautiful song why do they cry when they hear a beautiful song why do they cry over a couple of words it's it's the code the code is meant for the soul to to grab it right the soul has to grab it not the ears. The ears don't grab it. The, the ears listening to a, to a song that makes you cry is is irrelevant. It's not the ears. The ears are just a, a channel, right? It's the soul that grabs it. Your soul, your heart grabs it. And, and this is what I... I don't get tired of telling people this. When you look at my paintings, don't look for all the information. You'll miss the painting if you look for all the information. Look at the painting so that you are able to receive the information. Don't look for the information. The information will be given to you once you start just looking at the painting. The, the information is always it's always given to you because your your soul knows how to quote unquote digest it, translate it, receive it. You don't read a book and and, and, and as you're reading a book, you don't say, Oh my god, like what are they talking about? What do they mean with bridge, with this old town or you know, whatever scenery there the book is depicting. You don't say, I don't understand. You don't say that. You imagine it, right? You don't say, I can't relate. Of course not. You imagine it. You imagine the, the, the because, because of the description of the words. You imagine, you imagine the scenery. You imagine the, the scene in the book. Well, a painting works the same way, guys. We need to stop looking at paintings so literal. A painting works the same way. A painting is like a book. It's like a song. You, you, we have to step outside the literal and start looking at the painting as if you're reading a piece of poetry. Not even photography is literal. That's what Ansel Adams taught us. Not even photography is literal. Something that looks so literal, right? Photography looks a, a, a copy of reality. And it's not, it's not literal. Still has to be composed. The job of the artist is to see things that other people see but neglect so the artist picks up what the rest of humanity neglects and puts it in a pedestal and says this is important this matters this is why trees I mean of all things fucking trees why don't we paint trees so much why, why do we do that why do we paint still lifes why do we paint fruit why do we paint you know anything you can see if you want to see trees couldn't you just go out the window and, and look at trees? Why, why do we cherish trees in, in painting? Why do we cherish anything? Why? Because it's neglected. 
it's neglected. We see them every day. This is why Caravaggio used to used to paint things that were rotten. He he was a great artist. He reminded us, look, this thing that is neglected, this rotten thing, the rotten apples, the dying dying fruit, the dying flowers, this thing that you don't care about, I'm going to put it in a beautiful painting with a beautiful frame and it will be on a pedestal because you neglect it. As human beings we neglect it. So the best artists paint what is forgotten. The best artists paint what is forgotten. Paint the forgotten. One of the ways that I like to see the things that I paint is that I like to paint the backgrounds. In my in my mind, I'm painting a background. I'm not painting. This is not a foreground. Right? This this is the background of a painting, of maybe of a painting of a painting. It's the background. It's the noise. It's when you look somewhere, and there, you know there's something back there, but you're not you're not really paying attention to it because your attention is in is in is in the foreground, right? Maybe you're looking at a person, but you know there's there's trees back there, there's cars back there, there's there's people walking, there's things happening back there, but your attention is not there. Your attention is obviously naturally on the person in front of you. But you but 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 your awareness recognizes that there is a background and there's something happening back there. That's what I like to paint. I like to paint the background. When I paint anything, steel eyes or or uh, figurative work, whatever it is, I like to look at it as I'm painting the background. Not the main act. The main act is easy to see. The background is forgotten. It's almost always neglected. The main act is very easy to see, you know. You look at something and, and you say, "Oh, I know, I know what that is." Yes, because that's the main act. Right? That's where your attention is. Pay attention to the to the thing that's neglected. That's a little harder. Pay attention to the to the noise, to the trees in the background, to what sounds like noise. Pay attention to the fogginess. When you look at something or someone, you know there's some sort of fogginess behind the person or the object that you're looking at. That fogginess is what I like to paint. Pay attention to that. It's not easy. But I live to paint that. This is my work, guys. This is. I'm gonna start talking more about what my work um, represents. I know people don't like to talk about that. I know artists don't like to talk about that. I know it's it's frowned upon. I know the the, the artwork should should be discovered uh, uh, by the viewer. But I'm going to start talking about, to me, what it, what it's meant to me. Because what it means to me doesn't necessarily mean what it means to someone else. Someone else can pick something up, something else from it. To me, all of my paintings are background noise. They're the noise that we forget. They're the crying baby when you're trying to talk to an adult, right? You're trying to talk to another, and some far away there's a crying baby, or there's a car going by. Right? There's a car going by, and then you're trying to talk to someone else, or you're trying to listen to your song, and something else is bothering you. That thing that is bothering you in the background, that's my work of art. Thank you so much. Take care, guys, and I will talk to you soon.